ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله هذا الرسول الكريم الذي بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونسع الامه ترك امته على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات الله ربي وسلام عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان احسن الحديث كلام الله اي كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان لكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اللهم انا نعوذ بك من عذاب النار معاشر المسلمين الاسلام دين الاخلاق الحميده الاسلام دين الاخلاق الحميده دعا اليها وحرص على تربيه النفوس المسلمين عليها وقد مدح الله تبارك وتعالى نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال وانك لعلى خلق عظيم وجعل الله سبحانه وتعالى الاخلاق الفاضله سببا للوصول الى درجات الجنه العاليه يقول الله تبارك وتعالى وسارعوا الى مغفره من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والارض اعدة المتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاذبين الغيث والكاذبين الغيث والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين امرنا الله تبارك وتعالى بمحاسن الاخلاق فقال سبحانه وتعالى ايضا ادفع بالتي هي احسن فاذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوه كانه ولي حميم وما يلقاها الا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها الا ذو حظ عظيم معاشر المسلمين فالاخلاق وقد حسن الله نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بمكارم الاخلاق فقال سبحانه وتعالى فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث سنن الترمذي اتق الله حيث ما كنت واتبع السيئه الحسنه تمحوها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن فعل المسلم فعل المسلم ان يتحمل بحسن الاخلاق وان يكون قدوته نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي كان احسن الناس خلقا وكان خلقه صلى الله عليه وسلم القران الكريم قول عائشه رضي الله تعالى عنها لما سئلت عن خلق النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فكانت كان خلقه القران الكريم براذس ان سيستر الاسلام وي بريز الله سبحانه وتعالى اول بريز جوز تو الله سبحانه وتعالى ذا لورد اوف يونيفرس may the peace and blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the topic of our khutbah this afternoon 
we are discussing about akhlaq akhlaqul muslim the character of a muslim as we know brothers and sisters in islam not only the five pillars of islam will take us to jannah not only the shahada establishing the five daily prayers fasting in the holy month of ramadan giving out zakah going to hajj the six pillars of iman reciting the quran and birrul walidain not only that will take us to jannah al akhlaq also akhlaqul muslim it is among the items that it will take a muslim to the jannah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al islam din al akhlaq al hamida islam is a religion which is really emphasizing about akhlaq the character how you are behaving وَحَرَسَ عَلَى تَرْبِيَةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ عَلَيْهَا Islam has really emphasized about how we should behave, our character also. We should watch our character also. This is the topic of our khutbah this afternoon. Look at our role model. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our role model. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised him in the Holy Quran, in numerous verses in the Holy Quran. With the different qualities. He was establishing salah at night. Kana qawwaman, kana sawwaman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a lot of qualities. Among the qualities of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised him. His Lord has praised him in the Holy Quran. That is a person who was having the good character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him. In Surah Al-Qalam, when he said, Muhammadu wa innaka la'ala khuluqin a'adheem. Muhammad, you have the good akhlaq. You have good integrity and honesty and akhlaq. So he is our beloved from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is our role model. So we should imitate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all our things. Including the akhlaq. Watch about your akhlaq. Is your akhlaq the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are you behaving the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam behaved? The way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us how to behave? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised his messenger wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim wa ja'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-akhlaq al-fadila sababan lil-wusul ila darajat al-jannat al-aliyah also akhlaq is an item or it is an amal which can take you to the highest level of jannah we have told several times by the scholars when they are giving us tafsir al-quran when they are giving us the rules about the hadith that in Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is different categories of Jannah. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has advised the followers, when you are supplicating for the Jannah, supplicate for the highest level of Jannah. It is known as Al-Firdaus al-A'la. And that, that is the Jannah for the prophets of Allah. They are going to accommodate it there. The shuhada, the martyrs, they are going to be accommodating Firdaus al-A'la. As-Salihin, like Salaf al salih that is their place. That's why Rasulullah has really encouraged that when you're making dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you opportunity so that you'll be the neighbor of the messenger of Allah sallallahu And the place of the messenger sallallahu is for those who are So let us always supplicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi al kareem to grant us for those who are inshallah. And let us make a dua for each other. That always, the way we are meeting in the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with these beautiful faces, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us to meet in Jannah, inshallah. Even akhlaq, it is something can take you to the highest level of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned many ayahs about the highest level of Jannah. Among the items which will take you there, it is akhlaq, not only five prayers. You are attending five daily prayers, but akhlaquhu sayyi'ah, ma'ad Allah. You are attending five daily prayers, but your akhlaq is very bad. Your family, they are complaining about your akhlaq. Your siblings are complaining about your akhlaq. Your neighbors are complaining about your akhlaq. And you have five daily prayers. You are establishing five daily prayers. You are fasting. But the neighbors, both the Muslim and the non-Muslim neighbors, because among the akhlaq is to behave well to the neighbors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about the rights, he mentioned even the right of the neighbor in the Holy Quran. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was talking about the neighbor, he never specified that you should be only good to the Muslim neighbors. You should be good to both the Muslims and non-Muslims uh, neighbors. Your akhlaq should attract the non-Muslim to Islam. They should say, subhanallah, we have a, a neighbor here who is called Muhammad. He's a Muslim. He lives in our estate. His akhlaq, his character is very good. He's so kind. That is da'wah. Da'wah is not only to preaching, only preaching. Da'wah also is practical. Da'wah also is practical. And da'wah is not only responsibility of the mashayikh. All of us, we have responsibility of the da'wah. The way you behave in your estate towards the neighbors, also it is da'wah. You are a businessman. The way you are conducting your business with Muslims and non-Muslims, with the good akhlaq, that is also da'wah. You are a shopkeeper. You are a shopkeeper, people come and buy from you. The way you are dealing with the customers, that is also the da'wah. You are a medical doctor, attending to the diseases and the patients. They are coming to you. The way you are attending to them, that is also the da'wah. That's why we are advising Muslims, don't leave the work of da'wah only to us. All of us, we have that opportunity. In your office, you are a doctor, you can have enough copies of the Holy Quran. After you are attending, after you have attended to the patient, you can give the patient the copy of the Quran. You are a customer, you are a shopkeeper. You can have enough copies of the Holy Quran translated in the language that they understand. The customers, they come, you give them the copy of the Quran. That is also the da'wah. So brothers, wa amarana subhanahu wa ta'ala bimahasil akhlaq. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in many verses of the Holy Quran. I cannot quote all the ayahs because of the limited time that we have. Among the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, talk, is talking to us. Allah is communicating to us, all oh, the believers of the Quran, all oh, the reciters of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating to us, when we have a difference, when we have difference with someone, and all of us, we are Bani Adam, sometimes we cross. But when we have differences with someone, let us not hold the grudges. Uh, change the badness to the goodness. Show him the kindness. Change the bad to the goodness. After you have done that, then you will see also the person whom you have enmity, an enmity between you and him or you and her. He will be like a close friend to you. After changing to the goodness, even a person whom you have differences, you will see him closer to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many ayahs. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also there is many ahadith. We cannot also quote all the ahadith because of the limited time that we have. Among the hadith, I just want to quote hadith of Sunan al-Tirmidhi. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is communicating to us also. Muslims, we have, this is our two main sources of sharia. We have primary source of sharia, and we have the secondary source of sharia. The primary source of sharia is the Holy Quran and the Sunnah. We are guided by the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many hadith, he has talked about akhlaq. He has really emphasized about Muslims how to behave. Among them the hadith of Sunnah al-Tirmidhi. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. Not only in the masjid. Not only in haram when you are doing tawaf. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only in the masjid. Everywhere. Today on the streets. When you are in the office. When you are in your house. When you are in the market. Everywhere. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. What be sayyat al hasana tamhuha and change the badness to the goodness. Uh, this goodness automatically it will erase the badness that he has done before. Always when you have done something wrong, when you have when you are sinning, you are told also to do the uh, tawbah and also to do amal salih. That amal salih, the righteous deed that you are doing, 
automatically it will erase the sins that we have been committed. The Messenger Sallallahu proceeded the hadith, he said, وَخَالِقِ nasa. Listen to the last part of the hadith. وَخَالِقِ nas, وَخَالِقِ nas بِخُلُقٍ hasan. And when you are interacting with the people, here Prophet Sallallahu never said the Muslims. He said, وَخَالِقِ nas, entire mankind. وَخَالِقِ nas بِخُلُقٍ hasan. And when interacting with the people, interact with the people with the good akhlaq. Your talks, watch out your tongue. When you are talking to the people, watch your tongue, guard your tongue. When you are talking, Allah says in the Holy Quran, talk to the people using the nice words. When you are talking to the family, when you are talking to your relatives, when you are talking to your neighbors, when you are talking to the people, Talk to the people using the good words. Wakulu linnasi husna. Semeni matamshi muzuri muzuri. Go to the people, talk to the people using the nice words. Wakhalik linnasa bi khulukin hasan. Fa'ala al Muslim. It is upon the believer or a Muslim. An yatahamala bi husna akhlaq. He should have the good conduct. Wa an yakuna kudwatuhu fi dalika Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aladhi kana ahsanu nasi khuluka. And the person whom you should imitate and guides you is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, let us study the seerah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the way, one of the way to show the love to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is studying the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is allegation that has been going around in town that those who are not celebrating the birth of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those are false uh, allegations. Those are false allegations. It doesn't mean that when you are not celebrating the birth of the Prophet, you don't love the Prophet. That's the reason why we are quoting him every time and then. We love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huwa qudwatuna, he is our role model. It's an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should be sallam as our role model. By not celebrating the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it doesn't mean that we don't love, we love Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want to advise myself and advise my brothers and sisters. One of the way of loving Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is the message also for today, our khutbah. Let us also study the seerah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fathers, you are here, and the mothers can hear me. Let us, all of us, have a book of seerah in our houses. Let us all have a book of seer in our houses, whereby every day the leader of the house, at least you read five sentences. Love of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the seer of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, biography. The books are there all over, written in the language that we understand. The books have been translated in the language that we understand. You can have a, a copy. Uh, you can have a copy. Go to your local imam, local scholar and ask him which is the best Sira book I can buy from the bookshop. I want to put it in my house. I want every night to have one paragraph or two paragraphs before you go to the bed. After family, they have their dinner. You can make them to sit. Let us today about discuss about the birth of the Prophet. Today we are discussing the children of the Prophet. Let your children know the children of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us have a book. That is one of the way to show the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Let us study. Let us instill these teachings, the seerah in the minds of the younger ones. In the young ones about Muhammad Rasul. And also let us have the book of Tawheed. Let, let, let's not forget about the Tawheed also. In our house we have, a, there is many books of Tawheed. At least also the younger ones, they should also learn about Tawheed. It is a book that should be in every Muslim house. Not you are going to Muslim house, the first thing invites you, it is the music. When you are putting the loud music in your estate, in your flats, which example are you showing the non-Muslims? For them, putting the gospel music louder, it is part of the worship for them. For them, it is part of worship. Putting the gospel music, and you must put the gospel music loud. That's the instructions from their priests. That in their houses, you should have the gospel music and it should sound loud. Send the message of the Jesus Christ to the entire floods. That is the message they're getting from the priest. 
And what is the message you are getting from the, from the Imams? Let us have the books of the seer of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us have the book of Tawheed in our houses. And today, brothers, there is many ways. There is YouTube channels. You can subscribe. All these mashayikh, you see them here, all of them. They have YouTube channel. All of us, we have YouTube channels where our darsa, our khutbah are recorded and they are put in our YouTube channels. We have our accounts. Let, us, let them go there. Let them they'll go there. We have TikTok accounts because one of the things today it is used is TikTok. And the young teenies today are taken out by the TikToks. You are all aware, many of our young teenies, young Muslim men and women, the girls and the boys, they are misusing this technology. They are misusing this technology badly. At night, their work is to sleep late. They are sleeping at 2.30 a.m. in the morning, 3.30 a.m. in the morning. The entire night, they are watching TikTok. They are watching TikTok, and they are not watching the good thing. We are saying, because nowadays even there is a name we have, we are, not, we are known as Haram Police. Because anytime we condemn something, we are known as Haram Police. So that's our name. When we see something bad, we must condemn. من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيدي فإن لم يستطع فبلساني فإن لم يستطع فبقلبي وذلك أضعف الإيمان When any one of you come across منكر you must condemn you must take action if we cannot take action with the hand because we don't have that authority then at least we condemn with our tongue that's why we are condemning and we'll continue condemning they'll call us haram police Many names will come. Anytime we come across, whether it is on social media, when you write something bad, something which is un Islamic, we will return to show you the way the good way. So it is our responsibility, brothers. Kuntum khaira Ummah, you are the best Ummah, Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Why? Is it because of the beautiful beautiful faces? Is it because of the beautiful ethnicity that we come from? Is it because of the beautiful regions that you come from? Kuntum khaira ummah. You are the best ummah. Why? Ta'amurula bil ma'aruf. Ta'amurula bil ma'aruf. Commanding what is good. Wa tanahawna alil munkar. And forbidding what is wrong. That is the work of Muhammad, Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you see something bad, you close your eyes, also you are responsible. You see something bad is happening in your, in your town, in your estate, in your neighborhood, and you are silent. That silence shows that you are with them. We must condemn. We must come out. Among the bad akhlaq that we are facing as Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam today, it is what is known as LGBTQ. LGBTQ, it is something that the Western world are spreading it and they are marketing it and they are using their wealth to ensure that they are spreading this evil and vices around all the communities and we cannot accept that one they have destroyed their families now they want to destroy our family they have destroyed their society now they want to destroy our society they have destroyed their countries their women are working naked they are going to the office naked and nobody is telling them anything that is now what they, are, they want to bring it in our, in, 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 our, in, our, in our continent. And we must stand up as Muslims. We live behind our differences. We talk with one language. That this LGBTQ, initially those days, back days, it used to be known as homosexuality, gayism and lesbianism. But you know we're in Akhir Zaman, where the sins and muharramat will be modified so that it looks attractive to the society to trap in. That's the reason why they're giving it LGBTQ. Where was this name 10 years ago? Where was this name 20 years ago? Why are you using the rainbow flag to spread their evil uh, mind? Why are they not using the uh, American flag or UK flag or Australian flag or Canadian flag? They are using the rainbow flag. We have been taught in school when we were young that the rainbow is the, is the sign of the rain and the rainbow has eight colors we went through the school but today they have hijacked rainbow anybody now will be seen in the rainbow you are either supporting those guys or you are associating with them with them why are they using rainbow flag 
to spread their, their, their vices. Brothers, we must come out to show that this one, even if the Supreme Court of Kenya has said that they should have the right to have a society and forming their own group, we are saying no. That one is not allowed. And you have seen the Christian priests have come out, Catholic Church, Protestant Church, they have come out clearly and say that no LGBTQ in our country. That Munkar, we must stop it. And that's the reason today there is a demonstration in town. After Salat al Jum'ah, our Muslim brothers, all those who are, can join them, the procession will take from Jamia Masjid, it will go to the Supreme Court of Kenya, and then they will go to the National Parliament, where they will present their memorandum to show that we are against this akhlaq. We are talking about this thing. We must talk. We must talk. Let us not bury our mind in the sun. We, we, pro we, pre we pretend that like nothing is happening. We must correct the government. Allowing LGBT in the, in the country, it is something that we don't allow as we Muslims. We speak in this language. Akhlaq of Islam, there is nature. And the nature is a man to marry a woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for Adam alayhi salam a woman. Is a man to get married to a woman. This issue of homosexuality, people who have the same gender to have relationship, it is against Islam, it is against the, our deen, we must condemn, we must not accept it in our country. So we must talk for other people to, 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 to hear our, our voice. If you are silent, then nobody will hear our, our voice. Let us condemn this akhlaq. Aqulu ma tasma'oon, istaghfirullah, yaghfir lakum, innahu huwa al-ghafurur raheem, wa huwa tawabur raheem. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب الرضا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كري الكافرون معاشر المسلمين أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله تطبيقا لأمر الله سبحانه وتعالى حيث يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فعلى المسلم أن يتحمل بحسن الأخلاق وأن يكون قدوته في ذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي كان, الذي كان أحسن الناس خلقا وكان خلقه القرآن قول عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها لما سئلت عن أخلاق النبوة فقالت عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها كان خلقه القرآن uh, When the delegation of the Sahaba they went to the house of Aisha house of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in the, in the absence of Prophet that time the Prophet was not in the house when the delegation of the Sahaba visited the house of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم to the youngest wife of the Prophet Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها our beloved mother they went there to inquire. Their inquiries was about akhlaq of Rasulullah wasallam. Tell us Aisha, we know Prophet wasallam from outside. You know him more inside. Tell us about akhlaq of the Prophet. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha responded. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she answered them with less than a sentence. She told them, kana khuluqu wal Quran. The akhlaq of Rasulullah wasallam was Quran. That is the short answer. Whatever Quran has commanded Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he obeys and he submits himself. Whatever the Holy Quran has prohibited Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he abstained. That is khuluq of Quran. That is khuluq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akhlaq of the Prophet. Aisha answered to the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala like that. And that should be also us. We Muslims, our akhlaq should be Quran. Let us be like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That whatever the Holy Quran has commanded us, we, we obey. And whatever the Holy Quran has instructed us to abstain, let us not go to that. 
let us obey the instructions of the Holy Quran. Many times we are reminded that the Holy Quran is not only for recitation, is not only for memorization, is not only for having big awards, competition of the Quran, people are going to be given big awards. But the main objective of the Quran, it is to be followed. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakara ul albab. Muhammadu, this kitab that we have revealed to you, mubarakun, it is a blessed book. Mubarakun, this holy Quran, it is blessed. But what is among the purpose of revelation? Liyadabbaru ayatihi so that people will be reflect about the eyes of the Quran. People should implement the teachings of the Quran. You cannot read the Holy Quran, then you are involved in the riba transaction. You cannot recite the Holy Quran, you involve yourself in adultery. You cannot read the Holy Quran, involve yourself in khiyana. You cannot read the Holy Quran, you are Sifa, you are a liar. You are a munafiq. You go and kill. You go and fight each other because of the clanism. And all of us, we are in the Quran, the same Quran. We are reciting the same Quran. Our Quran is one. Our Qibla is one. Our Prophet is one. Our Deen is one. Our Creator, the Lord of the universe is one. Why are we fighting the clanism? Why are you fighting the, the other brother? Because of the name of the clan. This is Jahiliya. This is Jahiliya. Da'uha fainaha muntina. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about the clanism, fight of the clanism. He said, Da'uha, live about this fight of the clanism. Fainaha muntina. It stings. It stings like a dead body. When an animal died here, and the animal will stay there for two days without uncollected, what will the smell come from there? The bad smell will come from that animal. Then the clanism, the fight that we have our internal problems or inter clanism, it stings like that. This is the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Let us unite under the flag of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Let us unite with Kitabullah. Are we not reflecting that one day we are going to leave this world? Every day we are, every day we are attaining the janaza. Today we have four janazas here. And it is not ibra for us. Every day we are burying people with our own hands. We wash with our own hands. But we are not taking ibra. Let us take ibra, brothers. That we are going to be questioned. We are going to be questioned. Muslims, we are being monitored. We are not like non-Muslims among the six pillars of Iman. As Muslims, we believe that we are being monitored. Whatever action that we do, it is recorded. Whatever words which you alter is going to be recorded. Are you forgetting yourself when you are funding the clanism war? You forget yourself when you are having the private meeting at night, how to attack the other clan? Let us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use that money to educate the orphans who are lacking the fees in the universities. Among our community, we have so many problems. We have the orphans whom their fathers passed away, like our brothers and sisters who passed away today, who will take care of their children. It is our responsibility. Let us use those money to take care of our orphans. The widows whom their husbands have passed away, who's going to take care of them? It is our responsibility, brothers and sisters Islam. Let us unite. We are one people. We are one ummah. And our leader of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yaqulullahu tabarak wa ta'ala, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي مرة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم من صحابة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خصوصا من وعي بكر وعمر وثمان وعلي وسائر صحابة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداءك عداء الدين اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات على حياهم من الأموات اللهم اغفر أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين اللهم اغفر أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين 
اللهم اغفر امواتنا واموات المسلمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم اللهم اجعل قبر قبورهم روضة من رياض الجنة اللهم لا تجعل قبورهم حفر من حين نار برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين اللهم ارزقنا توبة قبل الموت وارزقنا شهادة عند الموت وارزقنا جنة ونعيمة بعد الموت اللهم ثبتنا بالقول الثابت اللهم ثبتنا بالقول الثابت اللهم ثبتنا بالقول الثابت يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين اللهم ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا واخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تغطلا به وافعلنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا وافعلنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا وافعلنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على قبل الغافرين معاشر المسلمين رحمهم الله قوموا إلى صلاتكم